So what does composability have to do with command line parsing? Well, we'll answer that question in a moment, but first another question. Who here is actually used to catch? So handful, that's good. The rest of you should be ashamed. <laughs> if you have used it, you'll know that it has a fairly rich uh, command line interface. Um, you can see there that it's, uh, it's got lots of options, all nicely formatted in the usage strings, even with some nice you know, column wrapping on the, on the left, right-hand side. Uh, but it wasn't always that way. In fact, if we look at a, uh, a brief timeline of catch, uh, right at the start, just had a very basic ad hoc command line parser, just referenced argc, argv directly with some string matching. Um, it was simple, but it worked. And of course, over time, they added more and more things, more options, uh, string conversions, error handling, and those usage strings became more and more general, uh, to the point that I actually found that I had a library within a library. So even the libraries were composable. So what I did was I split that library out, called it Clara for command line argument arranger, um, and put that up on GitHub as a separate library. But that had a couple of problems, um, one of which was that it was like catch itself, constrained to C++ 98. I had a few limitations. Uh, and a couple of sort of slightly dead end design decisions that uh, I'm meant to go back and revisit. So eventually, with catch 2, uh, now imminently out, rebased on C++ 11, I took the opportunity to rewrite Clara from the ground up with C++ 11, but also revolving around this idea of composability. So what does that really mean in practice? Let's take a look at an example. So this is a, um, a single option parser. So uh, just binds a variable name there to, uh, uh, to that variable, uh, combined to a variable or a lambda, um, you've got the, the, the usage string documentation in there, the options themselves. So it's sort of like a little mini DSL. But this is a complete standalone parser. So you can use this to parse straight from argc and argv. You pass them in at the top um, by running them through a very simple lexer that lazily tokenizes uh, the arguments. And then what that returns is the, a series of remaining tokens and a status to say whether there, were, whether there was an error and if there were, was, what the errors were. And of course, you can, uh, you can create additional parsers for additional options. So here, here's another one. Um, once you've got more than one, this is where it gets interesting, you can then compose them by using, in this case, uh, the pipe operator. And this is where the magic happens. Because remember I said that the, the first option will return the, the remaining tokens. So within the operator, if there are no errors, it will pass those tokens on to, to the next parser. So it's a, it's a bit of a, a monadic bind there. So you're now left with a combined parser. And of course, we can, uh, we can do away with the intermediate variables, just have a, a nice declarative um, uh, setup of, uh, of your parsers, and we can easily add more. This is an argument rather than an option, but it's basically the same sort of thing. In fact, this is exactly what catch now does. This is the, uh, the complete command line specification for catch. It's all very regular and neat and, uh, and easy to follow. Uh, you can see at the end there, it does return that combined parser, which is all well and good, but what's, what's the actual benefit to doing it this way? What do we get out of it? Well, if you're a user of catch, you can uh, declare your own main, and the bit, in, uh, the bit of highlighted code there is what you might add, to compose that uh, command line parser that catch has in session.cli with your own one. Very, very simple to add your own binding to your own variables, and then you just pass that back to catch, and it will use it to produce usage strings to parse the command line into your variable where you can immediately use it. And if you look at the uh, beauty of string produced, you can see the, uh, the additional one added on the end there. And if you have your own applications um, with various com different components that don't necessarily need to know about each other, they can all expose their own command line parsers or partial parsers, and they can then be composed at a top level um, and that they will benefit from that. So that's been a composable command line parser. I've been Phil Nash, you can reach me in these places or on the JetBrains booth tomorrow. And also doing a talk on Friday on persistent hash trees, so be there. Thank you.